Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the mathematics of a transformer which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson what we're going to be looking at is looking at calculating values in a transformer system. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson we can describe what a transformer is and explain how it operates. We can calculate values of a transformer system and then finally we can explain how a transformer works including its inefficiencies. Now in today's lesson we're going to cover the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, the operation of a transformer and in particular the equations in this part of the specification. So a transformer works by the following idea. An alternating current flowing in the primary coil produces an alternating magnetic field in the coil causing the core of the transformer to magnetize, demagnetize and remagnetize continuously in opposite directions. So what this does is it produces a change in magnetic flux in the primary coil which is then amplified by the core of the transformer. Now this flux linkage is then focused to the secondary coil by the core of the transformer. Now the secondary coil cuts the magnetic flux linkage of the iron core and the, and the alternating current in that primary coil produce an alternating magnetic flux linkage. So this leads to a change in magnetic flux linkage for the secondary coil. So as a result the change in magnetic flux linkage induces an EMF in the secondary coil and this produces an alternating current when part of a complete circuit. Now this leads to the following equations in a transformer. We know that from Faraday's law of induction that the induced EMF is equal to the number of turns times by the change in flux over time or the rate of change of flux. So we can write this for the primary coil as Vp is equal to Mp times by the change in the rate of change of flux linkage or delta thi over delta t. Now this occurs as the voltage is due to the rate of change of flux and the amount of conductor in the flux. And we can write a similar equation for the secondary coil in a transformer where Vs, the secondary voltage, is is equal to ns times by the rate of change of flux so delta thi over delta t now again what why is this the case it's faraday's law of induction it's the idea that the the induced emf the voltage is due to the rate of change of flux and the amount of conductor in the flux now we can combine these two equations into one equation the transformer equation so the ratio between the potential difference of the coils of a transformer is the same as the ratio of the number of turns in the coils. So we can write this equation as the following. Primary voltage over secondary voltage is equal to the number of turns in the primary divided by the number of turns in the secondary, or Vp over Vs is equal to Mp over Ns. So what this tells us is that a step-up transformer will have more turns on the secondary coil than they do on the primary coil, and step-down transformers have fewer turns on the secondary coil compared to that of the primary coil. Now this works as the voltage induced is directly proportional to to the rate of change of flux linkage. Once again, that's Faraday's law of induction. So, the change in magnetic flux linkage is directly proportional to the number of turns in the magnetic field, so that leads us to our transformer equation. Now, please note, in this particular equation, because a transformer works with an alternating power supply, so we'll have an alternating voltage and an alternating current, to get the true value in your equation, you've got to use the root mean square voltage when you're determining the values. This is because, like we said before, a transformer works on alternating current and alternating voltage. Now this equation is given to you in your examination book, however you've got to be able to use it. So let's look at a few examples of this particular equation. So here's an example question you might get. A transformer has 20 turns on the primary coil and 40 turns on the secondary coil. What is the output potential difference if the input potential difference is, 400, sorry, is 500 volts? So you write out your equation 
equation VP over VS is equal to MP over NS. Substitute the values in from the question into the equation so we know what VP is, we know what the number of turns on the primary are, is, and we know what the number of turns on the secondary coil is. So it's 500 over VS times by 20 over 40. So we then rearrange the equation so we bring the bottom terms to the top part of the other side of the calculation so it becomes 500 times by 40 equals 20 times by VS. Now please note I'm splitting my rearrangement into two steps to make sure I don't make a mistake with my mathematics. I then place the wanted value as the subject of the equation so I want VS so VS becomes 500 times by 40 all divided by 20 we then write out our final answer so we get 1000 volts and we have our units in our answer and we have the right number significant figures now it's always important after you do a calculation to do a logic check to see what you expect so you expect the secondary potential difference to be higher than the primary potential difference as the secondary coil has more turns than the primary coil now it's important to note as well you can look at the the ratios so if you look at the ratio of primary coil turns to secondary coil turns going from 20 to 40 the value has doubled so therefore the potential difference is also going to double from 500 volts to a thousand now always show your answer to a question like this always write out your equation always substitute the values in always clearly show your rearrangement and always make your final answer very clear with the correct units and the right number significant figures figures. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? So we've looked at the idea of the transformer equation. We've looked at the concept that NS over MP equals VS over VP and this links into our previous lesson where we looked at the transformer efficiency, the production of eddy currents, causes of inefficiency in a transformer and the transmission of electrical power okay, at high voltage including the calculations of power loss in the transmission lines. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can describe what a transformer is and explain how it operates. We can calculate values of a transformer system and we can explain how a transformer works, including its inefficiencies. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the mathematics of a transformer, which complements the lesson on the operation of a transformer, which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.